Hello, my name is Karen Lynch and today I'm here to talk to you about leading with purpose. I'd like to do that by getting us all for a moment just to pause and think, what is it that I am really good at? So to be clear, I want to know what you're really good at. Okay, just take a moment. What am I really, really good at? If I had one skill, one talent, what would it be? And I want you to hold on to that thought for a second. Because now imagine, how might it feel if you were using that combination of talent, skill or experience to make something good happen? Something really good happen? How might that happen if you did that every day or most days? Or how might you feel different as a leader? And what impact on the business might you have that is different? as a purpose-led leader. So I asked that question of you now because over a decade ago, I was actually fed up with working. I had a great and well-paid job, by the way, but I was feeling unfulfilled. Whilst my career had been pretty successful in media, 13 years, in finance, another six, I was still missing personal purpose. I decided that that was more important for me than anything and I decided to leave my relatively safe career to find it. Now for me at the time, that was a huge, huge jump and a huge risk. But I don't think most of us need to make such a drastic change. I actually think that finding your way to being a purpose-led leader is a way to find personal purpose. So in many ways, since the time that I left Barclays, um, a lot has changed about the way businesses think. A lot has changed about the way businesses think about purpose, or a lot about how we as individuals are allowed to think in a business about purpose. And general knowledge about impact, our impact on society as business and individuals, or our impact on the planet that we live on has moved on an incredible amount. So for most of us, what if it's simply a matter of finding out what we're really good at and doing something good with it through your work? That way, you could be a purpose-led leader in your business. Now, being a purpose-led leader, I think, is the best kind of leader to be. But why should it be the only kind of leader? I guess the big question is, is it possible for every leader to lead with purpose? Why not? Anybody got, anybody got any good suggestions? And even if you have, why not at least try what to lose? Because let's face it, doesn't the community that you live in, the society that we are, the planet that we inhabit together need your help and need my help? In this new world, one that I hope will soon feel post-pandemic, even if that means we're very much still living with it, but even when we're through the worst of it, we are left with more, not less, issues to address than ever before. I mean, many of us are often too busy, right, with life, figuring out how to pay the mortgage, get the kids to school, walk the dog, get to work. Am I going to work? What did I used to do on the commute? What did I used to wear to work if you're going back to the office? Um, but, you know, we're left with more issues than ever before. We still have people who are going hungry. We still have many, we have more people struggling with their mental health. We've got a society struggling to tackle obesity. We've got a huge lack of appropriate housing for those who need help most. We've got unemployment, particularly now thinking about the impact of COVID on some of our youngsters and their university years and their schooling years. All of that, not to mention a climate emergency that many now believe is irreversible if we don't act fast. So what do we do? Are we going to wait for governments or charities to solve these problems that we face? Of course not. It'll be too little and it'll be too late. And it'll be irresponsible of us as leaders to do that. 
The biggest single opportunity I think that we have as a society is to demand that as customers, as employees, as pension holders, and as leaders, that each and every business should do much, much more than deliver products or services to make money. Why can't businesses directly seek to solve the issues that we face as a society, a society that these businesses benefit from, through the very process of doing business? Now let's imagine that all businesses could do that. Let's imagine that in almost every single business category you can think of, there was a business that was already demonstrating it could be done. Now that sounds amazing, doesn't it? Does it sound an impossible dream? Well, here's the good news. I'm here to tell you that, in my view, absolutely not. Because this is exactly what some amazing businesses do every day. These businesses are called social enterprises. Now, you may have heard of that word, you may have heard of that descriptor, but not be completely clear what they do. So let me explain a little more. Social enterprises in the UK are estimated to uh, make up a significant part of our business landscape. There are an estimated 100,000 social enterprises in the UK, delivering together more than £60 billion to the UK economy, and employing over 2 million people. Now to put that into perspective, that's as many people employed as the UK creative industry employs, and it's as big an economic contribution as the UK's agricultural sector. So it's huge already, right? So there is already a business revolution going on. Social enterprise is a business revolution but that to date is far too much for more like my liking hidden. And yet it's needed more than ever to play a part in solving the problems of our society. But before I move on, I want to be really, really clear. This sector of business, social enterprises, are not to be confused with charities. They are definitely, definitely businesses. These are businesses that generate trading revenues and profits. They pay taxes. They are absolutely businesses, but they are different in a couple of ways. First and foremost, and hence the, the importance of, of today's talk, purpose comes first. The primary purpose of that business, of that organisation, is to solve one of the issues it has identified in society. The rest of the business model aligns behind that. And then the goal is to develop a sustainable business model to enable the sustainable investment in solving that issue. The second area where often you'll find a social enterprise is different is in the ownership structure. You won't find venture capitalists taking huge return. Um, you won't find big boards of shareholders representing pension funds. What you will find is organisations that are maybe community owned or employee owned or they're asset locked. And the important part about this is it means that the future of the business that's completely led by this purpose is protected. So it's not simply a promotional tactic to get more turnover, to then sell the business, get rich, go and live on the beach in Barbados. Now for me, the reason I'm so passionate about social enterprise is because I think it plays a really important role as part of a mixed landscape of capitalism. That's in the days when I like capitalism. I like to think of social enterprises as businesses that can really, truly disrupt the normal way of thinking. They can set benchmarks for social impact or environmental standards. So not only do they deliver their own impact and their own market with their own direct activities, they're also creating a ripple effect that inspires others, maybe challenges a market, 
and ultimately drives a wider interest and a wider impact overall in doing business differently. Now, my personal journey saw me leave my corporate career and I became a social entrepreneur. I was leading a social enterprise called Bellu Water. That's B-E-L-U. Bellu, Bellu. Um, Bellu being the correct pronunciation. Now, if you've ever dined in a Café Rouge, a Bella Italia, a uh, Pizza Hut, a Zizi's, or if you've been really lucky and gone to Le Manoir Cat Saison, you will have experienced a beautiful bottle of blue mineral water, or perhaps you've experienced uh, blue filtered water, if the restaurant owner has been particularly environmentally conscious. In fact, if you've been out recently, since, since lockdown uh, opened up a little, you might have seen a more recently ranged and fabulous range of mixers and tonics. Not me, I've been left blue just over a year now, so this is the, the new team making great strides forward. Now, even if you have spotted them, you might have completely missed the fact that Blue is a social enterprise. So let me explain how this business model works to try and bring to life how purposeful leadership can be so impactful. So Blue was absolutely inspired by the idea that all businesses can do something more than just make money. But of course, the trick, the art was in figuring out what's the business model that, that would work and what was the purpose. So back in 2010, um, the business was, was launched for the, the second time, which is a whole other story. And people assume now when you Google Blue, always worth a Google and read the story, that the issue Blue wanted to address most was that of ending water poverty. So ending water poverty with a business that trades in water makes a nice impact circle, don't we think? But actually, the outcome of building a successful business that differentiated itself was about something different. For Blue, it was about setting the environmental benchmark in the sector. Well, what does that mean? It means being the first to use recycled plastic, developing the lightest weight designs in glass, by moving customers from using single use products to filtration systems, by investing in green glass, by measuring and offsetting the carbon footprint. There were so many things that Blue did. Its obsession was around showing other businesses and particularly other drinks businesses, how you can think differently because if we can do that and be profitable, then all drinks businesses could. So that's the ripple effect that I was talking about. And the fact that Blue Brit built a brand partnership with Wall Trade to 2030, which is a obviously a clear differentiator and promised all its profits, was on the assumption that this business would be successful. And back in 2011, when that partnership first went live, the aim, the hope, was to pass £100,000 per annum to Wall Trade. So from 2011 to 2018, um, there was a, a, a very interesting journey, uh, a lot of debt to pay down, a lot of learning to be had. But to cut a very long story short, in 2018 and then again in 2019, Baloo by this point was handing over £1 million to all trade. And so what were the things that made Blue different? It's an environmental brand and it's profitable. Well, actually, our belief is that it was a purpose first business that everyone in that business, as a leader, thought purpose first. Oh, and of course, the thing I must mention is that it was a very small group of people, less than a dozen actually, who were all hired for something they were really, really good at into a business where they would have the opportunity to do something really, really good with it. Now, there are so many more amazing social enterprise businesses or or social enterprises that I could mention. And I thought I'd share just a few that might resonate with a few digital leaders in the room. Now, COVID-19 meant many social enterprises have had to adapt their models and quickly. And like most businesses utilising technology, it was to access customers of those who might need their support or customers who might want to buy their products. Now, I'm sure many a digital leader loves uh, a beer or two. Um, if you haven't heard of them, please Google Toast Ale. Toast Ale is an amazing social enterprise focused around reducing food waste. And guess what? They make beer 
from bread that would otherwise go to waste. I mean, what a brilliant idea. Um, but they've built their business focusing on the hospitality sector, focusing on pubs and, and, and restaurants and events. Um, often because as a social enterprise you might have smaller budgets, it's easier to get known in certain sectors and we all have to make our choices. Um, and for them, through COVID-19, making a pivot to supplying their customers at home, because as we all know, there's been huge growth in delivery to home, was a really important thing and a fast learning curve that Toast Ale had to go on. Because like many social enterprises, tight, bu tight budgets might mean you don't have strong digital resources, you might not have an expert in your team, and we had to go and find those. Um, but even those that were... Um, even those that were already advanced in their digital skills, I guess, looked at COVID as an opportunity to increase their access to customers through digital channels. Now, if you haven't heard about it yet, there is de definitely a, a good reason for you guys to Google the eBay for Change programme. It was launched relatively recently, and actually there are some amazing social enterprises you'll find on the eBay uh, uh, for Change programme. So. Imagine you could buy a belt or a handbag made from a retired, a retired fire hose, seriously. So you take a fire hose that once fought a fire, um, beamed and commissioned, and it's made into beautiful designer products. Honestly, have a look at Elvis and Chrissy's websites. It's just fantastic stuff and a great way to do your Christmas shopping. Or maybe good wash, maybe granny, um, you know, maybe you're getting sorted for Christmas shortly and you want some ethical soaps. Or perhaps socks for dad or, or grand, granddad. Stand for Socks, another great social enterprise where for every pair of socks sold, each, each, each sale results in a pair of socks going to someone who needs them, someone who is homeless. Now, honestly, there is a social enterprise for most things. And going back to that eBay for change platform, just go there and, and you'll see what I mean. So, you know, if you're if you're needing birthday, uh, birthday clothes, baby clothes, um, perhaps you've got a new addition in the family, or perhaps you're looking for a partner for your parental leave. And um, when, you're, when your team go off, you want to give them a From Babies With Love gift box, which is an amazing idea. Um, so look out for From Babies With Love. Um, or maybe you're more sporty and you need some new sports kit, maybe a new football for the kids. And SoFab are another great social enterprise who've really found a way to broaden their market through that initiative. And I guess this is one thing that we can all do as, as individuals and as procurers, we can help by buying social. But the bigger point on here, of course, particularly when it comes to leadership, is that driving social impact indirectly, so for eBay, helping these social enterprises, as well as directly, can be very good for business. So ask yourself and ask your organisation this question. How could you or your business collaborate with, help or assist like this? But rem remember, it's not all about products, right? We need digital savvy people. We need digital services. We need your input when we're offering services too. For example, I'm hugely honoured to be on the board of an amazing social enterprise called Homes for Good, based up in Glasgow. Now, imagine trying to run a business through lockdown where you're essentially a social enterprise lettings agency, but perhaps your tenants, because of their circumstances, need a little bit more support than, than most. We exist at Homes for Good to make sure that those who need a beautiful home most and who are most likely to be at the back end of the queue because perhaps they're in receipt of benefits, don't continue a spiral journey when things maybe have gone wrong in their life. We help them start the upward spiral as soon as possible by helping them access a beautiful home, some of which we own and some of which we let on behalf of landlords. And of course, the lack of social housing, the lack of decent housing is a huge problem, as I've already said, we in society need to, need, need to support. And until COVID, of course, our tenants support they pop into the office and see us, we might pop out and do visits. For us at Homes for Good, finding a way to support these people using digital access, we thought was a big expense. You know, we might need to just set up differently, acquire some knowledge and get going. 
of course, what we uncovered, and of course this was already on our doorstep and we should have known it, is this huge issue of digital inclusion. Those who don't, just don't have access to the right equipment or data to make the switch onto online channels that many of us have so easily done within COVID. Now, your community of digital leaders must know how to address this. So a challenge I throw at you to think through. We at Homes for Good, we got through, but we are the exception to the rule in how we support our tenants. How many other housing associations and, and private landlords, or more importantly, the, the tenants of those houses struggle because of their lack of use of digital? So where might a good collaboration or partnership for your business have helped? Where could you still help? Now let me, as I close, bring this one step closer to, I hope, your, your skill sets. Definitely worth a Google and a few names to plug are some folks in your space. 90 are a social enterprise digital agency. They build tech products for the insurance sector so that they can build profits. So they're a for-profit, not for profit, and 90% of their profits all go to charity. Might not be the right model for you, but I thought I would share. Birdsong, um, another great example. They identify as a tech for good organisation, but actually if you look at them online, you might see them as a clothes retailer. They're not. They're enabling disadvantaged groups who make clothes access market. So Birdsong are an online fashion retailer that exists because they've, their purpose has been to apply tech for good. Or perhaps you've heard of Autocon. Autocon are a digital product testing agency that are breaking down barriers for people with neurodiverse conditions like autism. And they're helping them get into the labor market using their core strengths and skill sets. Or Clear Voice Interpreting, they're, a, they, they're also a Tech for Good award winner. And actually it's telephone interpreting service that they offer for people who've been displaced and are refugees in the UK and 100% of their profits go to the charity Migrant Help. So as you can see, there are so many different and exciting business models to learn from when thinking about how could purposeless led leadership work for you or work for your business. And so with that, I'd like to close exactly where I started and ask that you all do one thing. Just take a little time out to really ask yourself, what am I really good at? And then go and do something good with it there's no better feeling. Thank you. And if you'd like to find out more about Social Enterprise, a really good place to start is at socialenterprise.org.uk. Thank you.